And we are live now. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, commissioners and staff and ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the City of Patterson Planning Board meeting of Wednesday, October 6, 2021. 6.30 p.m. via webinar session. Carolyn Northrop, you may continue. Okay, thank you and welcome back, Maggie. Okay, uh, commissioners, planning board staff, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as chairwoman of the City of Patterson's planning board, I call this meeting of 10 6 to order. I hereby state that all the provisions of the State of New Jersey public meeting law have been fully and completely met that the notice of provisions required have been properly posted in the planning board office and with the city of Patterson clerk, that the public notice and advertisements have been published in the Herald News on September 23rd, 2021 in accordance with the law, and that the copies of such notice and public advertisements are on file in the planning board office, as is also the agenda listing the applications to be taken up by the planning board at this meeting. The procedures tonight will be in accordance with the rules, regulations, and bylaws as heretofore determined by the planning board and its office in the municipal complex in the city of Patterson. Roll call, please. Good evening, commissioners. Commissioner Ahmed is absent. Commissioner Cleves is absent. Commissioner Fisher is absent. Commissioner Santana? Absent. Thank you. Commissioner Roman? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Fulmore? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Figueroa? Present. You're muted. Thank you. Councilman Kalik? I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Vice Chairman Eugene? Present. And Chairwoman Northrop? You forgot uh, Commissioner Lorenzo. Oh, that's correct. I'm so I apologize, Commissioner Ligonso. Commissioner Ligonso. I'm present. Thank you very much. I apologize for that. No problem. And Chairwoman Northrop absolutely is present. Yes, present. Thank you. Thank you. you may proceed. Okay. I uh, notice pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act addressing effective coronavirus measures on the next public meeting. Consistent with the coronavirus-related uh, restrictions of Executive Order Number 107, given on Saturday, March 21st, 2020, by Governor Philip D. Murphy, the Planning Board of the City of Patterson will not conduct in-person participation of the public at all future meetings until further notice. However, public participation will be available by means of communication equipment pursuant to NJSA 10, colon, 4-8, commencing on April 15, 2020. Though there may potentially be a practical need for a limited number of administrative, technical, or other city personnel to be present in or near the council chambers, third floor, City Hall, 155 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, in-person participation of the public is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said executive order number 107, public participation will be available by calling 973-321. 1579 and the meeting ID is 711-680-001 and I will be repeating that later on during the course of the meeting uh, planning um, on the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence. The public may also participate in the meeting by accessing the website of the City of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov and following the email link for the meeting, www.pattersonnj.gov forward slash planning board. This evening we have three applications on the agenda and the first one is uh, MAFHH LLC uh, located at 228 Rose Park Boulevard, Block 3515, Lot 21. Uh, Mr. Rubin, are you representing this applicant? Yes, Madam Chair. For the record, I am Michael Rubin, attorney, 1330 Hamburg Turnpike, Wayne Township, New Jersey. And we are counsel for MAFHH LLC, uh, located at 175 Broadway in the city of Patterson. Uh, okay, 
And we are ready to hear the uh, remarks and, and report of the uh, city planner. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so the site, this site is uh, a vacant and the applicant proposes to construct a three-story mixed-use building on the 2,500 square foot parcel, one 754 square foot commercial space and five residential units are proposed. The first floor proposes the commercial space and one one-bedroom unit. The second and third floors each propose two one-bedroom units. There will be a total of five one-bedroom units. The I'm sorry, yeah, one bed, five one bedroom units. The third floor rooftop terrace provides 611 square feet of amenity areas. A variance is required for the first floor residential spaces. Ground floor residential spaces are not permitted. This proposal is within the C 1 neighborhood commercial district of the Fourth Board Redevelopment Plan, and it requires site plan approval and bulk variances. Um, Mr. Deutsch, please give us your review. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Property taxes and sewer charges are paid today. Persons having a 10% or greater ownership interest in MAFHH LLC are served providing an address of 58 Main Street, second floor, Hackensack, New Jersey. James Pika, licensed surveyor of P2 Land Surveying, has prepared a survey dated January 21st, 2021. Survey indicates that the parcel is fronted at 25 feet on Rosa Parks Boulevard, a rear lot line that also measures 25 feet, and, and northern and southern side lot lines that measure 100 feet each. The parcel has an area of 2,500 square feet or 0.6% of an acre. And I think, I think it, any, anyone that's not uh, speaking should should mute themselves. The survey also indicates that the parcel is devoid of structures with the exception of two sheds located at the rear of the parcel and a partial fence. Portions of both existing structures to north and south are on the shared property lines. The topographic information indicates that the site is relatively flat. Evans Architect has prepared a three-page plan submittal Revised to June 9th, 2021. Sheet number S1 is the site plan and details page. The plan indicates the zoning ordinance data, the tax map, the proposed site plan, a recharge pit detail, existing conditions, notes, the lighting detail, the fence detail, and notes. The, the proposed site plan indicates that the building is to be constructed on the front property line on the southern side property line, five feet from the northern side property line, and 20 feet from the rear property line. Uh, could I help one moment, please. I just wanted to let the record reflect that uh, Commissioner Fisher is in attendance. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This proposal is between two existing buildings. To the south at the corner of Godwin Avenue, and Rosa Parks Boulevard, a two-story building exists on the shared property line with a liquor store on the first floor and residential units above. To the north, a one-story commercial building exists on the shared property line. The intent of the C1 neighborhood commercial district is to provide for retail and personal service businesses which supply the everyday needs of the neighborhood residents. The intent of the district standards are to allow for convenience retail and service businesses to operate without disrupting the general small scale residential character of the greater neighborhood area. Lots with a width of 50 feet or greater prior to subdivision and or development shall uh, not, are exempt from off-street parking. No off-street parking is required on existing lots that are less than 50 feet in width. As the building is fronted on Rosa Parks Boulevard at a width of 25 feet, the applicant is not required to provide off street parking as per the redevelopment plan. Mixed use buildings are encouraged, however, residential uses are not permitted on the ground floor buildings. The applicant seeks a waiver for the proposed first floor or one bedroom apartment. Sheet number S2 is the site plan detail. The plan indicates the sanitary sewer connection, the water connection, the concrete sidewalk detail notes and the proposed roof plan. The roof plan indicates five mechanical units 
an access staircase, and an amenity rooftop terrace of 611 square feet with a floating floor with wood decking. Sheet number A2 indicates the four plans and the building elevations. The first floor plan indicates three building access points. One access point is at the front of the building on Rosa Parks Boulevard into the 754 square foot commercial space, which includes a restroom and a mechanical unit. The second access point is on the northern side of the building into an enclosed refuse recycle room, and the third access point is on the northern side of the building, the lobby area, which provides access to the stairs, the upper floors, a sprinkler utility room, and to a one-bedroom unit of 603 square feet. A package room is indicated next to the access stairs. The applicant should advise if there is a specific use proposed for the commercial space. There are a wide range of permitted first four uses as described on page 40 of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Child care centers and establishments selling alcohol are additional uses requiring board approval. Other non-permitted uses that may be proposed will require a use variance. The second and third floors are identical in layout. Each floor proposes two one-bedroom units measuring 754 square feet and 761 square feet. Each of the five first floor Second and third floor units contain a living room, a kitchen, a full bathroom, a utility room, and a washer and dryer. The front elevation indicates Rosa Parks Boulevard. The storefront has four glass windows and a frame finish surrounded by a brick veneer. A wall-mounted sign with three gooseneck lamps above is shown on the first floor. The upper floors propose a two-tone stucco finish. The second and third floors have two sets of windows on each floor. The building has a height of 35 feet. The right side elevation indicates vinyl, horizontal siding on all floors. The first floor lobby access door is indicated as well as the door to the refuse room. Windows are located on all three floors. The left side elevation is indicated as being blank. The rear elevation indicates two sets of windows on each floor surrounded by vinyl siding. The applicant is proposing a minimum of five feet of sidewalk and tree placement and a tree placement area between the building and the curb line of Rosa Parks Boulevard. The minimum lot area requirement of 2,000 square feet in the C1 zone recognizes that there are many existing buildings on smaller size lots, and as a result, encourages older structures to be either rehabbed or built new without a larger lot area requirement in place. The applicant requests variances for the following proposed conditions. First four residential spaces are not permitted in this zoning district. Open space amenity space of 750 square feet is required based on 150 square feet per unit. And the applicant is proposing 1,100 square feet, 500 square feet at the rear of the building and 600 square feet on the rooftop terrace. It shall be the responsibility of the applicant or the preparer of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating that plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to construction officials. Surrounding land uses. This proposal is in the Ripley Park section of the city within the fourth ward redevelopment plan. The area is a mixture of commercial and residential uses, including remarks. The applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at approximately $500,000. The applicant should incorporate the design elements contained within the fourth ward redevelopment plan. At a planning board meeting held on February 8, 2021, at 223-225 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 3506, Lot 42, on a 3,750-square-foot vacant parcel, an applicant was approved to construct a three-story mixed-use building. One 1,330-square-foot one commercial space and seven res residential units were proposed. The first floor proposed a commercial space and one two-bedroom unit. The second and third floors each proposed one one-bedroom unit and two two-bedroom units. As your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Rubin, please proceed. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, our first witness, if it was sworn, uh, Matt Evans, our architect. Yes. If you could be sworn, please. Sir, can you please? Swear or affirm the testimony you have to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can you state your full name for the record? 
Matthew Evans, Architect, 470 Chamberlain Ave, Patterson, New Jersey. We accept him as an expert witness. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matt, uh, we are dealing now with uh, a vacant lot located at 228 Rose Park Boulevard, formerly known as Graham Avenue in the city of Patterson. Tell us what is being proposed from your viewpoint. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Uh, see if that works. Can you see that? Yeah, looking good. Okay, good. So um, basically, uh, keeping with Mr. Deutsch's report, um, you know, we're proposing uh, ground floor commercial uh, and a rear handicap unit, and then we have uh, two one-bedroom apartments uh, on the second, and then two on the third floor. We have a roof terrace and um, showing the elevations. All the um, units comply with the minimum square footage for the apartments. Uh, one bedrooms being 600 square feet. Uh, we have from 603 to 761 square feet. Um, so that would, um, in keeping with that, we've added a roof terrace for the amenity space. Um, so we basically, Working with this site, it's 2,500 square feet, and I believe that uh, we've kept the variances um, uh, to a minimum on this one, uh, designing within the um, uh, NCC1 zone. And I can show you the, um, you can see the rendering. Can you see that? Can you tell us a little bit more about the rooftop amenity? How will that fit into the amenities uh, in this building. Okay, so going back to the site plan, we have uh, a rear yard. We have open uh, a passive recreation space in the rear for the uh, tenants. Um, and then to uh, piggyback on that, we have the uh, roof plan, which has mechanical units in the back, and we have the amenity rooftop area in the front, so we have about 611 square feet on the amenity space. So we have different things. We have uh, furniture, um, some landscaping, and we have a, a, a roof terrace uh, wood uh, deck on the top. Uh, that would be consistent with ones we've previously submitted in the past. The front elevation, we have uh, gooseneck lights, wall-mounted sign, and all in keeping with the aesthetic uh, requirements of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Matt, the fourth ward redevelopment plan I have in my hand uh, states in, in the district, which is the C1 neighborhood commercial district, that residential uses shall only be permitted above the ground floor of a building. And in this particular case, we are showing one apartment unit on the ground floor. And could you explain uh, how this would be marketed and uh, how we're going to deal with the that as a variance issue? Okay, we show it as a, a requirement for handicap accessible units. It's a small building with a few apartments. So um, the handicap unit is a, allows us um, to create that for accessibility, and that would be to the rear of the building, so it's more private. It's not a street front apartment. Um, the the um, commercial unit, in keeping with the mixed use, would be at the front. We have 754 square feet that would be um, basically rental space for uh, appropriate use within the uh, fourth ward redevelopment zone. So, and lastly, uh, Matt, we're, we're dealing with a vacant lot. And as we all know, we're trying to do away with the vacant lots and derelict properties in the fourth ward. Will this fit in to the neighborhood scheme and the uh, whole scheme of the redevelopment area in uh, proposing new housing? Yes, yeah, so this is what we're proposing. I mean, 
A lot of these are vacant and abandoned lots. They're being redeveloped. We're redeveloping this, giving it a, um, a modern look to it. Uh, I don't know. Can you see the rendering we, that I posted? And uh, the street trees. Yes, we uh, see it. Okay, thank you. The street trees are part of what the developer uh, will provide also. Yeah, so we have some decorative street trees, uh, cherry, which are blossoming trees seasonally. And then we show um, different materials. We have a brick facade at the base and stucco with large uh, casement windows above uh, with a different, um, with a very minimal, clean, uh, modern aesthetic look. Good. Those are the questions I would add, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Before we move on to the next witness, I just have one quick question. Um, where in that lobby can packages be delivered? We have a package area. If you see, it's kind of hard to read. On oh, the got it. Off. You need the Hubble telescope to read that. Okay. Right. Is that what it is? Yeah, let me see a little bit. So can you okay, see that? Yeah, we can see it. Yes, I see a package area, okay, and utility room. Okay, Springfield Utility Refuge. Okay, got it. All right, good enough. Um, at this time, um, Mr. Rubin, what do you have? You have three witnesses tonight? You have... Uh, yeah, yeah, George Williams, our professional planner. Okay, and then you have uh, the uh, Mr. Ayev... Uh, well, if, any, if there are any questions of uh, the owner, we have representatives of the owner with us okay but in the event that uh we don't need them we'll move forward okay uh, okay written is for the application itself is george williams our professional planner yes mr williams bring him in please yes if he could be sworn where is he matt you're gonna have to take you down on your exhibit there you go there you go okay i see him okay there's george you swear a firm testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I most certainly do. You say your full name for the record? Yes, good evening, commissioners. Uh, Madam Court Reporter, welcome back, Madam Secretary. Uh, my name is George Weedle Williams, representing the Nishwing Group at 105 Grove Street, suite number three. Thank you. We accept him as an expert witness. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Williams. Much. Tell us. Uh, how this particular project, this building, fits in to the Fourth Ward Redevelopment Plan, which was enacted by the City Council some few years ago. It's a great place to begin, Councillor, and I appreciate that intro because I'm going to be a bit different in my testimony today than I normally am because this application requires so little relief, but it certainly does advance the um, intent and objective of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Uh, council captured that already, and I think Mr. Evans did as well. As this board knows, the intent and purpose of the fourth ward redevelopment plan is to reduce or eliminate the indices of blight, and specifically uh, remove or eliminate vacant lots, abandoned buildings, or deteriorated structures. And we have three applications before the board this evening, I, I know we're focused on 228 at the moment, but I would encourage the board to think about the collective benefit of these applications if they are approved. It reminds me of when I first began as a planner and the slogan for community development block grant was changing neighborhoods one block at a time. And I think that's what you have before you this evening. Um, this application uh, only requires one relief, Mr. Deutsch characterized uh, that relief is appropriate for this board, and that is for the one dwelling unit on the ground level. In my professional opinion, uh, and this board has approved similar applications in the past, uh, this deviation from your code is appropriate in a couple of contexts, um, but generally speaking, appropriate because the typical intent of requiring residential units to be above um, excuse me, to be above commercial spaces is to make sure that the commercial interaction at the grade or ground level is not um, interrupted by uh, uh, residential units which may have windows closed, etc. In this case, as in prior applications from uh, similar applicants, the proposed deviation is at the rear of the building is not viewed from 
the commercial streetscape, and therefore it doesn't really impair or impede the intent of your code. So again, my job is a little simpler today. Um, in my professional opinion, there are sufficient proofs for the support of this deviation from your code, either as a waiver or a variance, um, and they would be cognizable in the C variance context of C2, um, because uh, they would be a more appropriate um, proposal for development than a strict application of your code. Again, the strict application of your code would be to prevent interruptions on um, the streetscape for commercial. This will not interrupt it at all. It's certainly grounded in the purposes of zoning, and um, as in the Pullman Court case, uh, the benefits flowing from the entire proposal can be considered by this board. I would submit that one of the benefits certainly is the provision of ADA accessible uh, or adaptable units at the grade level for at least one of the tenants. Um, based on my analysis of the entire application, your land use documents, uh, I find no impairment to your zone plan. In fact, I see you advance several purposes and certainly no detriment to the public good, again, because the unit will be at the rear of the building and will not um, cause a detriment to the commercial aspect of the streetscape. So I'm again, uncharacteristically uh, brief, but I, I'm really impressed by the overall benefits of the community by the um, uh, aggregate of the three applications you're going to hear this evening. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Williams. That's the application, Madam Chair, unless okay. uh, you require something from the owner, but that is um, the application. Yeah, I just want to, uh, I, I know the owner, uh, you know, is before us a lot, so I understand that. Um, I just wanted to make sure, and I think Mr. Williams can answer this, um, the usual cameras will be out there. And yeah. the lighting. Okay, so that, that eliminates maybe other questions that may come up. Okay, so then at this time, I'm going to open it up to the public. Public may call in if they have any questions of either the architect, Mr. Evans, or the planner, Mr. Williams. And it would be 973-321-1579. And the meeting ID is 711-680-001. I'll allow two minutes for call-ins, three minutes for questions. If we don't have anybody right on the line right now, I'm going to open it up to the commissioners. One moment, please. Okay. We have no callers at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, so for the sake of time, I will open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, any questions for either one of these witnesses? I have a question. This is Commissioner Figueroa. Yes, please go ahead. Um, as far as the rooftop terrace, which I love the idea of rooftop terraces, um, how is that as far as the security measure with the rooftop? I'm a little concerned. As far as what like Mr. Evans would probably have to address that. Okay. Well, it'll be limited access to the rooftop. It's just for the uh, tenants. Tenants would access it, um, and that would be either from a key code, you know, at, similar to something you see at uh, maybe a hotel where you um, are able to access it, but nobody else would be unless they have the code or. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. So I've partaken of rooftop terraces, so big thing, big fan. And then I like it. <laughs> the other part of my, uh, I have a second question. As far as the uh, first floor, the commercial use, is there any idea of what? Any potential, anything like lined up or that you guys are thinking? Yeah, you know, I think at this time we're going to have to uh, hold that question. I uh, will swear in uh, Mr. Reed. And we will get some of those questions answered, okay? Thank Do you have anything God. else? Do you have anything else? No, that was it. Commissioner? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions before I we swear on Mr. Reed? And Madam Chair? Yes. I was scolded the prior uh, hearing this week for trying to impersonate Mr. Reed, but I can I can provide <laughs> to that question if it would help uh, the commissioner. Oh, you then you know what they're looking to do there? Yes. Um, Go right ahead. 
they are the applicants looking for only uses that are permitted and specifically uses that are really targeted to the immediate vicinity. So it's contemplated, and again, the sheer size of the space limits what can be there, but it's really for neighborhood convenience uses. Okay. I still think, uh, does anyone have any other questions? If so, we'll have to swear in Mr. Reed. <laughs> oh, it could be only okay. Mr. Reed. We're not swearing in Mr. Reed because no one has any other questions. Okay, no questions. Okay, then I'm going to ask, I'm going <laughs> to, you're not on tonight. Mr. Reed. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Rubin to please summarize. I don't hear no callers, uh, Madam Secretary. Not at this moment. Okay, thank you. Then I'm going to yes. ask uh, Mr. Rubin to summarize, please. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, this is uh, 228 Rosa Parks Boulevard, uh, and this is a vacant lot in the Fourth Ward redevelopment area, uh, and uh, C1 specifically, and uh, this fits into the parameters of the redevelopment plan. We have just one minor bulk variance, uh, which we've transformed uh, into a, a handicapped unit uh, for a disabled uh, tenant to utilize. We think that makes a lot of sense, even though the redevelopment plan just says uh, don't put your um, new, uh, residential units on the first floor. Putting it on the first floor here makes a lot of sense because there would be no steps uh, to go up and it would be very accessible uh, for a handicapped person. We think this is a, a great use. Um, but for all of the reasons that Mr. Evans and uh, Mr. Williams has given, we respectfully ask the board to move forward to approve uh, this much needed improvement to the fourth ward. Thank you. Thank you. Would any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? I would. Okay, yeah, Commissioner yeah. Figueroa, please go ahead. Okay. On the application of MA FHH LLC 175 Broadway, Patterson, New Jersey 07505, at property address 228 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 3515, Lot 21. I move that the board attorney prepare a resolution guide granting site plan approval, all variances, city engineer, HEP Soil Conservation District. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Fulmar. Roll call, please. Commissioners? Second. Yes. Hello? Someone called me? Okay, Commissioners. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Ligonso? Yes. Commissioner Santana? Yes. Commissioner Roman? No. Commissioner Fulmore? Yes. Commissioner Figueroa? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Odin. Yes. And, yes. and Chairwoman Northrup. Yes. Thank you. This Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next application to be heard is MAFHH LLC, 240 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 3514, Lot 21. The site is vacant and the applicant proposes to construct a three-story mixed-use building on the 2,500 square foot parcel, one 754 square foot commercial space and five residential units are proposed. The first floor proposes a commercial space and a one-bedroom unit. The second and third floors each propose two one-bedroom units. There will be a total of five one-bedroom units. The third floor rooftop terrace provides 611 square feet of amenity space. A variance is required for the first floor residential space as ground floor residential spaces are not permitted. This proposal is within C within the C1 uh, neighborhood commercial district of the fourth ward redevelopment plan, and it requires site plan approval and bulk variances. This is basically the footprint of the first application that we heard. So um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Rubin, 
Uh, first of all, no, I'm going to ask Mr. Deutsch, please give us your review. Well, if I could just put my phone. I'm sorry, yes, you are representing the applicant. I'm sorry I skipped over that. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> Michael Ruman appeared for uh, the applicant MAFHHLLC located at 175 Broadway in the city of Patterson, and we represent the applicant slash owner of the site and ready to hear the planner's report. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Joyce, can we have your review, please? Yeah. This is for 240 Rosa Parks, correct? This is for 240 Rosa Parks, Block 3514, Lot 21. Okay. Property taxes and sewer charges are paid to date. Persons having a 10% or greater ownership interest in MAFHH LLC are Surfer Roz Lot Hop, providing an address on 58 Main Street, 2nd floor, Hackensack, New Jersey. James Pica, licensed surveyor of P2 Land Surveying, has prepared a survey dated January 21st, 2021. Survey indicates that the parcel is frontage of 25 feet in Rosa Parks Boulevard. A rear lot line that also measures 25 feet, and northern and southern side lot lines that measure 100 feet each. Parcel is area of 2,500 square feet or 0.6% of an acre. The survey also indicates that the parcel is devoid of structures. To the south, a dwelling exists four feet from the shared property line. To the north, the adjacent lot indicates that it is vacant. Topographic information indicates that the site rises in elevation from 101.41 at the front of the parcel to 104.76 at the rear of the site. Evans Architect has provided a three-page plan submittal revised to June 9, 2021. Sheet number S1 is the site plan and details page. The plan indicates the zoning ordinance data, the tax map, the proposed site plan, a recharge pit detail, Existing conditions notes, the lighting detail, the fence detail, and notes. A note on the plan indicates that the entire site and site perimeter is to be equipped with video security throughout the public areas and site lighting along the travel public way and parking area. Surveillance cameras are to connect to the City of Patterson Police Department system. A proposed site plan indicates that the building is to be constructed on the front property line on the southern side property line, four feet from the northern side property line, and 20 feet from the rear property line. The intent of the C1 Neighborhood Commercial District is to provide for retail and personal service businesses which supply the everyday needs of the neighborhood residents. The intent of the district standards are to allow for convenience, retail, and service businesses to operate without disrupting the general small-scale residential character of the greater neighborhood area. Lots with a width of 50 feet or greater prior to subdivision and or development shall provide off-street parking. No off-street parking is required on existing lots that are less than 50 feet in width. As the building has frontage on Rosa Parks Boulevard, a width of 25 feet, the applicant is not required to provide off-street parking as per the redevelopment plan. Mixed-use buildings are encouraged, however, residential uses are not permitted on the ground floor of buildings. The applicant seeks a waiver for the proposed first floor one-bedroom apartment. Sheet number S2 is the site details plan. The plan indicates the sanitary sewer connection, the water connection, the concrete sidewalk detail, notes, and the proposed roof plan. The roof plan indicates five mechanical units, an access staircase, and an amenity rooftop terrace, of 611 square feet with a floating floor with wood decking. Sheet number 82 indicates the four plans and the building elevations. The first floor plan indicates three building access points. One access point is at the front of the building on Rosa Parks Boulevard into the 754 square foot commercial space, which includes a restroom and a mechanical unit. The second access point is on the northern side of the building into an enclosed refuse recyclable room and the third access point is on the northern side of the building to the lobby area, which provides access to the stairs, the upper floor, a sprinkler utility room, and to a one-bedroom unit of 603 square feet. A package room is indicated next to the access stairs. The applicant should advise if there is a specific use proposed for the commercial space. 
There may, are a wide range of permitted first floor uses as described on page 40 of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Child care centers and establishments selling alcohol are conditional uses requiring board approval. Other non-permitted uses may be proposed will require a use variance. The second and third floors are identical on layout. Each floor proposes two one-bedroom units measuring 754 square feet and 761 square feet. Each of the five first floor, second and third floor units contain a living room, a kitchen, a full bathroom, a utility room, and a washer and dryer. The front elevation indicates Rosa Parks Boulevard. The storefront has four glass windows and a frame finished surrounded by a brick veneer. A wall-mounted sign with three gooseneck lamps above is shown on the first floor. The upper floor is proposed a two-tone stucco finish. The second and third floors have two sets of windows on each floor. The building has a height of 35 feet. The right side elevation indicates vinyl, horizontal siding on all floors. The first floor lobby access door is indicated as well as the door to the refuse room. Windows are located on all three floors. The left side elevation is indicated as being blank. The rear elevation indicates two sets of windows at each floor surrounded by vinyl siding. Excuse me, my screen went blank. Just give me one moment to get back to it. The applicant is proposing a minimum of seven feet of sidewalk and a tree placement area between the building and the curb line of Rosa Parks Boulevard. The minimum lot area requirement of 2,000 square feet in the C1 zone recognizes that there are many existing buildings on smaller size lots and as a result encourages older structures to be either rehabbed or built new without a larger lot area requirement in place. The applicant requests variances with the following proposed conditions. First floor residential spaces are not permitted in this zoning district. Open space amenity space of 750 square feet is required based on 150 square feet per unit. And the applicant is proposing 1,100 square feet, 500 square feet at the rear of the building, and 600 square feet on the rooftop terrace. It shall be the responsibility of the applicant and or the preparer of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating the plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. This proposal is in the Ridley Park section of the city within the fourth ward redevelopment plan. The area is a mixture of commercial and residential uses. In conclusion, the applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at approximately that should be $500,000. The applicant should incorporate the design elements contained within the fourth ward Redevelopment plan. At a planning board meeting held on September 14, 2020, an application at 204 210 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 3501, Lots 19 and 21, on a 9,550 square foot parcel, was approved to construct a three story mixed use building. Two commercial spaces containing 499 square feet, 1,099 square feet, and 19 residential units were proposed. Were proposed. The first floor proposed two commercial spaces, a studio unit, and 23 parking spaces. The second and third floors each propose seven one-bedroom, seven one-bedroom units and two two-bedroom units. Does your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman? Thank you, Mr. Deutsch. Okay, uh, Mr. Rubin, please call uh, your next yes. one. Our next witness is George Williams, our professional planner, if he could uh, come forward and be sworn. Okay. You want Mr. Evans to come first or Mr. Williams? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. As I did. Okay. All right. So we're going we're to call Mr. Mr. Evans. <laughs> Matt will come first. Matt, okay. Matt is on the call. I know he was is. here a moment ago. Yes, he is. You swear a firm testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Say your full name for the record? Matthew Evans, architect, 470 Chamberlain M, Patterson, New Jersey. Thank you, in exception as an expert witness. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and Mr. Evans. Uh, you have uh, prepared the design for uh, this building. Can you tell us what is being proposed? 
Okay, uh, similar to the last application, um, basically this is a mixed-use uh, corridor uh, along Rosa Parks. Uh, we're proposing five units and commercial on the first floor in front, and then we have, uh, similar to the previous application, we have green space in the back, we have amenity space on the roof, and um, it would be similar in context and the design as the previous um, uh, application. So let me um, share my uh, screen. Okay, that's the site plan showing uh, the the building similar to the previous one. I'll just... I don't see anything. You don't see anything? No. Nobody sees anything? Well, Actually, it looks like a champagne glass. <laughs> Uh, your sign, but yeah. What do you? Uh, no, that's I don't know. It was like, you're in the wrong show. Hold on, let me see some. Okay. Can you see it now? Well, I see the actual uh, yeah, rendering of the, of the building. I don't see your actual other plans for the right, floors. So all right, so I'm um, going to the rendering. Okay. Um, this would be a little different than the previous application. We gave a different aesthetic look to it. Um, we have a uh, more of a, uh, a traditional cornice. We have large windows uh, for the apartments above. We have street uh, a cherry tree uh, in the front for landscaping, and uh, that would be the extent of um, similar to the uh, two forty one. This is two forty across the street. Um, I can bring over the. Um, site plan so this is basically what was illustrated previously and the difference in this one we have a little bit different grade so it slopes up a little bit but we've accommodated that with a handicapped ramp along the uh compliant ramp along the side of the building so um back to you please tell us are there any amenities uh such as rooftop or anything else in this yes, building? Yes, so we have the rear. Um, as I mentioned, the rear space. We have almost 600 square feet in the rear of the property for uh, green space, passive recreation. And then we have um, the amenity rooftop terrace, 611 square feet um, for um, the tenant occupancy. And as testified before, and you would testify again, uh, that this is an area that only the tenants could utilize by using some uh, locking device on the door. Yeah, so just like a typical access to the roof, uh, it would be um, secured. And uh, the rear uh, landscaping and the front street uh, landscaping, which is really one tree, and everything else, that would be done by the developer of the site. Yes. So all new curbs, sidewalks, landscaping, paving, um, green space, all the improvements, site improvements would be responsibility of the applicant. And this is a vacant property today uh, in the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Yes. And in your professional opinion, uh, are all the uh, properties and requirements of the redevelopment plan going to be utilized in uh, the eventual construction of the site? Yes. You know, so all the questions I would have, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So at this time, please call Mr. Williams. Mr. Miller Williams, if you could be, please be sworn. I most certainly do. Certainly, good evening again, Commissioners. My name is George Weedle Williams with the Nishwain Group at 105 Grove Street, Suite Number 3 in Montclair. And we is an expert witness. Okay, Thank please you. go ahead. Thank you. We're dealing with 240 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 21 and Block 3514. Could you please give us the planning parameters of the site. Certainly, and commissioners, I apologize in advance. This is going to be redundant because the applications before you this evening are so very similar. So I'll begin by saying it is truly a pleasure as a planner 
to work on a group of applications that have such a significant impact, positive impact in a neighborhood. Um, the impact of this application, as with the others, is that it directly implements the fourth ward redevelopment plan. And as you know, the redevelopment plan, the intent and purpose is to redress those indices of blight, like vacant lots, abandoned properties, deteriorated conditions, etc. Uh, the application before you this evening achieves those goals and objectives and goes a bit further. Uh, Commissioner Figueroa, excuse me, what's your name, excuse me, uh, captured something that was in my testimony outline for the last application, but I neglected to mention. Uh, it goes, be the application goes beyond just advancing the goals and objectives, goes a step further and introduces urban amenities that I think Patterson deserves and should have uh, as with the commissioner, I too enjoy uh, rooftop amenities and think Patterson should have nothing less. Other cities have been doing uh, the same for a couple of years. So uh, kudos to the applicant for proposing a site that's designed with these amenities, including the rear yard space uh, and everything Mr. Evans mentioned. Again, this is an application with only one deviation from your uh, redevelopment plan uh, and your board planner, Mr. Deutsch, has identified that it's appropriate for this board. In my professional opinion, that deviation being the one dwelling unit on the ground level, but at the rear of the building um, is appropriate, does not detract from the intent and purpose of your plan. Again, primarily because in most mixed use ordinances, the reason for not allowing ground floor residences is you don't want to interrupt the commercial uh, pattern of the streetscape. In this case, if the board were to grant the relief as it has done in other instances where the unit is at the rear, not visible from the front, not impeding the retail streetscape, um, the relief could be comfortably granted. C2 context would be most appropriate, in my opinion. The benefits outweigh the detriments, but more importantly, in my professional opinion, uh, what's being proposed is a better zoning alternative than a strict application of your code, because in this case, it's not at the front of the building, but rather at the rear. Um, no detriments are public good for reasons I just mentioned. Certainly no impairment to your plan. Uh, for those reasons, I think the board can comfortably grant a singular deviation from your code, which is that uh, one dwelling unit at the rear, which provides access for handicapped dwellers. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, in your professional opinion, uh, that this uh, proposal will fit into the fourth ward redevelopment plan as uh, enacted by the governing body of the city? Yes, perfectly so. Again, the removal of vacant properties, infill quality housing development, and in this case, really furthering the intent of this particular district in the fourth ward, which is um, the C1, which encourages mixed use development. So yes, on so many levels, it does. Thank you, Event. The direct questions I would have of this witness, Madam Chair. Okay, I just have one quick question of uh, uh, Mr. Evans. Where is he? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I remember in the past when we've had these rooftop um, outer space area for for the for the tenants, um, there was a require. If I'm not mistaken, there's a requirement that they have to put a, a some sort of a I don't want to say a wall, but some sort of a partition up around that roof to make sure that everyone is safe and nobody's hanging over, stuff like that. Am I correct? Yes, this is a this is all new code for safety. So the the, the minimum uh, we're 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 going to propose a solid parapet around this around the roof. So okay. it has to be by code minimum forty two inches, and okay. it'll be a solid wall. So it'd be it's very private up there. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right, so um, I'm going to open this up to uh, anyone who has any questions of either witness. Just bear with me. I have to get up the phone number. Uh, okay, let me see. If anyone has any questions of either Mr. Evans or Mr. Williams, please call in. 
at 973-321-1579 and the meeting ID is 711-680-001. And I'm going to ask again, if we don't have anyone on the line, call, I'm gonna allow uh, two minutes for call and three minutes for questions. If we don't have anyone on the line from uh, the public right now, then I'm gonna open it up to the commissioners. We have no callers at this time. If there are any in between, okay. I will let you know. I thank you so much. All right. So at this time, I'm going to open up to the commissioners. Commissioners, any questions of either witness? Okay. Moving right along. I'm going to give it just one more minute in case anybody's calling in. If nobody calls in, then um, we'll resume the meeting. Yes, Chairwoman. There are no callers at this time. Okay, so if there's no other questions from any of the commissioners, okay, then at this time I'm going to uh, ask if anyone would like to make a motion on this application. I'll make a motion, uh, Chairwoman. Commissioner Is that Fillmore. Commissioner Fillmore? If yes, I'm please go ahead. I motion to approve on the application of M-A-F-H-H-L-L-C. At 175 Broadway, Patterson, New Jersey, 07505. At property 240 Rosa Parks Boulevard, block 3514, lot 21. I move that the board attorney prepare a resolution granting site plan approval, bulk variances, city engineer, and HEP soil conservation district. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Fisher. Okay, uh, roll call, please. That was Fisher? That was, yes, Commissioner yes. Fisher. Yes, it was Fisher. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> May I call the roll now, ma'am? Yes, please. Okay, Commissioners, Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Leonzo? Yes. Commissioner Santana? Thank you. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Fulmore? Yes. Commissioner Figueroa? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman Udeen? Yes. And Chairwoman Northrop? Yes. Thank you. This application has been granted. Congratulations. Okay. Bear with me one moment. Okay, so the next uh, application is almost like the footprint of the other two. It's M A F H H L L C, 241 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 3507, Lot 45. Um, Mr. Rubin, are you representing this applicant on? I'm just yes, I'm here. Uh, for the record, uh, this office represents MAFHH LLC, located at 175 Broadway in the city of Patterson. Uh, this is for 241 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 45 and Block 3507. And for the okay. record, I am Michael Rubin, 1330 Hamburg Turnpike Point Township, and we represent the applicant slash owner in this matter. Okay, thank you. So the site is vacant and the applicant proposes to construct a three-story mixed-use building on the 2,500 square foot parcel, one 754 square foot commercial space, and five residential units are proposed. The first floor proposes a commercial space and one one-bedroom unit. The second and third floors each propose two one-bedroom units 
There will be a total of five one-bedroom units at the third floor rooftop terrace provides 611 square feet of amenity areas. A variance is required for the first floor residential space as ground floor residential space are not permitted. This proposal is within the C-1 neighborhood commercial district of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Requires site plan approval and bulk variances. Uh, Mr. Deutsch, may we have your review, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Property taxes and sewer charges are paid to date. Persons having a 10% or greater ownership interest in MAFH LLC are surprised lot out providing an address of 58 Main Street, 2nd floor, Hackensack, New Jersey. James Pico, surveyor of P2 Land Surveying, has prepared a survey dated April 16, 2021. The survey indicates the parcel has 25 feet of frontage on Rosa Parks Boulevard, a rear lot line that also measures 25 feet and northern and southern side lot lines that measure 100 feet each. The parcel has area of 2,500 square feet or 0.6% of an acre. Survey also indicates that the parcel is devoid of structures. There are portions of a fence on all four sides of the parcel. The existing dwelling to the north is on the shared property line. The property to the south is a paved parking lot for the Bragg Funeral Home and proceeds to the corner of Hamilton Avenue. The topographic information indicates that the site is relatively flat. Evans Architect has prepared a four-page plan submittal revised to June 4, 2021. Sheet number S1 is the site plan and details page. The plan indicates the zoning ordinance data, the tax map, the proposed site plan, a recharge pit detail, existing condition notes, the lighting detail, the fence detail, and notes. The proposed site plan indicates that the building is to be constructed on the front property line, on the southern side property line, four feet from the northern side property line, and 20 feet from the rear property line. The intent of the C1 neighborhood commercial district is to provide for retail and personal service businesses which supply the everyday needs of the neighborhood resident. The intent of the district standards are to allow for convenience retail and service businesses to operate without disrupting the general small-scale residential character of the greater neighborhood area. Lots with a width of 50 feet or greater prior to subdivision and or development shall provide off-street parking. No off-street parking is required on existing lots that are less than 50 feet in width. As the building is thrown into Rosa Parks Boulevard, a width of 25 feet, the applicant is not required to provide off street parking as per the redevelopment plan. Mixed use buildings are encouraged, however, residential uses are not permitted on the ground floor of buildings. The applicant seeks a waiver for the proposed first floor one bedroom apartments. G number S2 is the soil erosion and site plan details. The plan indicates the sanitary sewer connection, the water connection, the concrete sidewalk detail notes. Sheet number SK1 indicates the four plans. The first floor plan indicates three building access points. One access point is at the front of the building on Rosa Parks Boulevard into the 754 commercial space, which includes a restroom and a mechanical unit. The second access point is on the northern side of the building into an enclosed refuse recyclable room. And the third access point is on the northern side of the building to the lobby area, which provides access to the stairs, to the upper floor, the sprinkler utility room, and to a one-bedroom unit of 603 square feet. The package room is indicated next to the access stairs. The roof plan indicates five mechanical units, an access staircase, and an amenity rooftop terrace of 611 square feet with a floating floor of wood decking. The applicant should advise if there is a specific use proposed for the commercial space, there are a wide range of permitted first four uses as described in page 40 of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. Shadow care centers and salvage and selling alcohol are conditional uses requiring board approval. Other non-permitted uses that may be proposed will require a use variance. Second and third floors are identical in layout. Each floor proposes two one-bedroom units measuring 754 and 761 square feet. Each of the five first floor, second, and third floor units contain a living room, a kitchen, a full bathroom, a utility room, and a washer and dryer. Sheet SK2 indicates the building elevation. The front elevation indicates Rosa Parks Boulevard. The storefront has four glass windows 
They frame finish surrounded by a brick veneer. A wall mounted sign with three gooseneck limbs above showing on the first floor. The upper floors proposed a two tone stucco finish. The second and third floors are two sets of windows in each floor. The building has a height of 35 feet. The left side elevation indicates vinyl horizontal siding on all floors. The first floor lobby access door is indicated as well as the door of the refuge room. Windows are located on all three floors. The right side elevation is indicated as being blank. The rear elevation indicates two sets of windows each floor surrounded by vinyl siding. Chaplin is proposing a minimum of seven feet of sidewalk and a tree placement area between the building and the curb line of Rosa Parks Boulevard. The minimum lot area requirement of 2,000 square feet in the C1 zone recognizes that there are many existing buildings on smaller size lots and as a result encourages older structures to be either rehabbed or built new without a larger lot area requirement in place. The applicant requests variances for the following proposed conditions. First four residential spaces are not permitted in the zoning district. Open space, amenity space of 700 square feet is required based on 150 square feet per unit. And the applicant is proposing 1,100 square feet 500 square feet at the rear of the building and 600 square feet on the rooftop terrace. So be the responsible of the applicant or preparing the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating the plan that satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. This proposal is in the Wrigley Park section of the city within the fourth ward redevelopment plan. The area is a mixture of commercial and residential uses. Concluding remarks. The applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at $500,000. The applicant should incorporate the design elements contained within the fourth ward redevelopment plan. A planning board meeting held on February 24, 2021 at 225-227 and 229 Rosa Parks Boulevard on a 6,092 square foot parcel. The applicant was approved to construct a four-story mixed-use building. One 491 square foot commercial space and 21 residential units were proposed. The first floor proposed a commercial space, the lobby entrance, an elevator, a stairwell, and 13 parking spaces. The second, third, and fourth floors proposed five one bedroom units and two two bedroom units. There was to be a total of 15 one bedroom units and six two bedroom units with 13 parking spaces proposed. That is your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Okay, so um, Mr. Rubin, are you going to have the same witnesses, Mr. Yes. Williams? And yes, Mr. Oh, Matt Evans. Uh, okay. Matt Evans could come on. Yes. He is there. Uh, and if he can be sworn once again in these proceedings. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Biden. Do you swear upon testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. You stay your for the record? Matthew Evans, architect, 470 Chamberlain Ave, Patterson, New Jersey. Thank you. We accept him as an expert witness. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Evans, can you please advise the board of the architectural plan for 241 Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 45 and Block 3507? Okay, uh, similar to the last two applications, no surprises here. We have a um, three-story mixed-use building, um, and that would be consistent with um, the bulk, uh, no bulk variances with the exception of the uh, handicap apartment. Um, Matt, are you going to play, are you going to put your, uh, yeah. the measurings and the drawings up? Yeah, let me do that. Um, okay. Okay, can you see it? There you go. All right, so you have 241 um, Rosa Parks. We have a similar green space, passive recreation in the rear, um, access to the side. And um, so that gives us our open landscape green space at the ground level. And then we have um, the, um, the rooftop amenity terrace on the roof. And the um, consistent with the other applications, it's basically all the amenities and all the um, uh, features of the previous applications. Well, could you tell us, uh, Mr. Evans, uh, just once again, 
Is the rooftop amenity going to be secure for tenants only? Yes, it's going to be secure, and I believe we um, have a note on our uh, on all our plans saying that the entire site site perimeter is going to be equipped with video security in all the public areas uh, and lit uh, lighting and surveillance cameras would be connected to the city of Patterson uh, police uh, communications. And uh, just generally, where are the green spaces going to be located? Uh, we have a, we're taking that rear yard and uh, we have 579 square feet in the rear, which would be used for passive recreation green space for the tenants. Um, it, are, are there any street level trees uh, that are going to be uh, planted and maintained by the owner? Yes, we have um, a street tree similar to the previous uh, applications that would be at the uh, front entry of the building. And those amenities uh, being the green space or being maintained uh, by the developer? Yes, all on site and we were improving the sidewalks, curves and everything within the property. Uh, Mr. Evans, just as we've talked about in all these other applications, but just so it is clear, in this application is what is being proposed uh, as to the construction requirements, will it all be fit, in, fit into the parameters of the fourth ward redevelopment plan requirements? Yes, we're meeting all the requirements for um, aesthetic improvements uh, and the architectural design uh, in accordance with the fourth ward redevelopment plan. And the uh, apartment on the ground floor, which requires a bulk variance, uh, that will be designed so that it can be used for a handicapped person or a disabled person, as it were, and uh, since it's on ground floor level, but without yeah, any yeah. stairs to, uh, to, to travel on. Yeah, it'll be a fully accessible unit, and um, I don't know if I mentioned before, they all have their own laundry facilities within the units, all separate mechanical heating and cooling units, which would be separately needed for each uh, tenant. Good. Thank you very much. Those are the questions I would have of Mr. Evans. Okay, thank you. Please call Mr. Williams. Yes, uh, George Williams, if he could be sworn, please. Mr. Ryan, do you swear a firm testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Can you hear me? I think you're muted. All right, good, on that. good evening again, Commissioners. I most certainly do. Can you state your full name for the record? Yes, my name is George Weedle Williams with Initiating Group, headquartered at 105 Grove Street, Suite Number 3 in Montclair. And Thank you. We accept him as an expert witness. Thank please you very proceed. much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams, can you please advise the board as to the planning parameters of this application? Yes, as Mr. Evans uh, mentioned in his prior testimony, this is the third of three very similar applications, so my testimony is going to sound a bit redundant. I'll just begin by saying, um, again, the impact of this application, if approved, taken in the context of the prior two applications, is just incredibly significant in terms of implementing the fourth ward redevelopment plan. And the intent and purpose of that redevelopment plan is truly to reverse the trends of blight by uh, eliminating vacant lots, abandoned properties, deteriorated structures, poor taxes, and other social malaise. And, and almost single-handedly, the applicant in this section of the fourth ward uh, redevelopment area, the C1 district, is creating a sea change in the neighborhood character in a positive way. Um, again, eliminating the vacant property and introducing quality infill housing, all of which advance the purposes and goals of your redevelopment plan. Very parenthetically, my partner happens to chair the state chapter of our professional organization's redevelopment committee. Uh, they are responsible for the New Jersey Redevelopment Handbook, and I constantly say to her that if they do a third edition, they should look at Patterson because Patterson, in my opinion, is the model of how redevelopment plans should be implemented. 
So I'll stop there as a commercial and just say, this application before you this evening truly advances the goals and objectives of your fourth ward redevelopment plan. Um, it also includes modern or urban, contemporary urban design, thanks to Matt Evans and the design team, including the amenities that Commissioner Figueroa and I are big fans of, which are rooftop um, amenities, which are just amazing. There's a resurgence of those uh, in New Jersey, and I think it's perfect timing for Patterson to join that resurgence and offer its residents such a good urban amenity. The only other issue that Mr. Williams, if you could just uh, touch upon, uh, is the ground floor apartment, which requires a bulk variance in that ground floor apartments are prohibited in the zone, but we are building one out and uh, for a specific use. Could you just give us a little uh, information on uh, the rationale of having that variance approved? Certainly, and I'll just, by point of clarification, I will submit that the redevelopment plan does not include any prohibited uses specifically, but it does, in terms of the mid mixed use context, suggest, as most ordinances do, that the residential component should um, be above the commercial. And the rationale for that traditional zoning requirement is so as not to break up the retail pattern or um, fluidity at the street level. Um, that is, windows that have blinds that are closed, there's no interaction with the sidewalk. In this case, we are not um, impeding that traditional intent because the proposed dwelling unit will be at the rear. It will not break up the uh, commercial continuity on the streetscape. It will not be visible from the streetscape. And so, in my professional opinion, um, the C2 context is appropriate because it allows the board to consider that what's being proposed is not a detriment to the public good, meaning it will not detract from your retail experience. It does not impair the intent of your zone plan because, as I just mentioned, the intent of the zone plan is really to make sure you have that retail experience. In this instance, the residential unit will be at the rear. It has the added benefit of providing a handicap accessible unit, which meets the needs of Pattersonians and surrounding areas. So on the whole, what's being proposed in my professional opinion is a better zoning alternative than a strict application of the four forward redevelopment standard. Again, in my opinion, that standard contemplates front, not rear. In this case, the proposed dwelling unit is at the rear. Um, and so in that context, I think the board can comfortably grant the singular deviation from the fourth ward uh, redevelopment standards. Thank you. Those are the questions I would have, Madam Chair. I have a question, so we're going to have to um, swear in uh, Mr. Reed. Just raise your right hand. You swear in front testimony not to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Say your full name for the record. Andrew Reed, R E I G. Okay, Mr. Reed, I have a question. I don't even know. Um, something's always bothering me about the, um, the storefronts in Patterson. It's bothered me for years. I'm going to ask, is there any way that you can limit the amount of paper advertisements that go up in the window of these storefronts? Is there any way, since you're the owner of the building, is there any way that you possibly can do that? They're sightly. They're unsightly. I can't stand them. They're like, you know, people just plaster everything up, and it, like all of a sudden you don't see the storefront anymore. All you see is a bunch of advertisements on the window. Yeah, we can, we can incorporate that into our lease, and if anybody wants to put up a sign, you know, obviously if, if we don't have approval for signage tonight, they would have to um, get zone approval to put up the appropriate uh, signage for that uh, zone. Yeah, I don't even care. I don't. They have to have signage. I get I, the signage is not the problem for me. It's the advertisements I mean, right. I, I, that go inside the window. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can control that by at least them know that that'd be a violation of lease to put these advertisements all up in their windows. Okay. All right. Good enough. All right. I appreciate that. Anything you can do because I think we should start to try to like these are all brand new storefronts, brand new windows. Brand, you know, let's make it look and, and keep it nice. I concur with you. Okay. All right. So um, with that, I'm going to open it up to the public. Just bear with me. I have to get that particular address out.
a phone number, rather, sorry. Phone number. Okay. Of course, now, of course, I can't pull it up. Does anybody have the phone number that the uh, public can call in? I don't have it in front of me, sorry. I have it. Madam Secretary? I, okay. You had it? I, I have it. Okay, Madam Secretary, please announce that I'll allow two minutes for uh, call-ins and three minutes for questions. Uh, just announce it for questions of any of the witnesses, okay? Absolutely. The Planning Board regular meeting for today, the um, the number you will be calling is 973-321-1579. The meeting ID number is 711-680-001. Again, that is 973-321-1579. Meeting ID number 711-680-001. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if I don't see anybody on the line right now, I'm going to open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, any questions at all of any of the witnesses? Commissioner Fisher, I have one. Yes, Commissioner Fisher? Yes, uh, this goes out to uh, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, how are you doing tonight? Great, Commissioner. How are you? Okay, good. Listen, uh, question. The place that your uh, this building is going to be up on, is it right next to uh, Carney, Bag Carney Bragg's parking lot? Is it right there? Next to the parking lot, if you could recall, there was a little, at one time it was a restaurant, then it became a chicken store, and then yes. about three apartments above it. And then it turned around about maybe eight years ago, then it was demolished about maybe five years ago. Yeah, thank you. That was the one that was, thank you, you're recording my, my memory from the, the fire, and it's just been an eyesore sitting there. I just want to make sure that was the same building. It sat there for the longest as an eyesore. Right. All right. Thank you. That was, thank you. That was my question. Mm -hmm. Madam Chairwoman? I'm sorry, I was muted. Is that Commissioner Fillmore? Yes, it is. Madam. Yes, go ahead, please. A quick question now. Uh, for Mr. Williams, uh, you did say that all three of these structures have many similarities. I was just curious, is there any significant difference? Is there something that stands out one structure over the other? Not that good question, Commissioner. Not really, other than their location on the block. They're very, very similar as described by Mr. Evans. Almost identical. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners? Okay. No other questions from the commissioners? Okay, so then, um, Madam Secretary, is anyone on the line? We have no callers at this time. Okay, so then I'm going to open it up. Uh, open it up. I'm going to ask uh, if any of the commissioners uh, would like, any commissioner would like to make a motion on this application. Madam Chair, before we get there, I just want to clarify <clears throat> yes. the issue that you had raised and Mr. Reed had agreed to. Yes. Uh, I'm just trying to um, hash out the wording in the resolution. Right. Is this going to be a condition of approval, if, if there's a motion for approval, a condition that there be no paper advertisements in the windows of the first floor unit? I'm going to, I'm not going to say none, but I would say keep it to a very, very, very minimum because I think it becomes unsightly. And so, like, I, I think they're brand new storefronts. I think we should keep them as such. We're trying to redevelop that area. I think we need to have it look nice. Yes, I think, like, minimum, at a minimum. Um, and also, our um, um, director of our company, Mr. Florio, he also texted me, and he strongly 1,000% agree with your assessment about the paper signage in the windows and you wanted me to let you know. Okay, there you go. Record also. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Madam Chair. It's just that the wording, the minimum. All right, minimum, then say minimum, you're minimum, I don't know how, you know, it's, it's too subjective. Say, I, you know. Okay, then just say, just say eliminated. With no, no, uh, no advertisements hung up on the glass inside the window, however you can put it. Mr. Reed, are you, um, are you in agreement with that? Like I said, not only I am, but uh, from the top of the company, they're in agreement with it also. Okay, so we'll make it a condition, but um, we're also going to reflect that the application was amended on the record to reflect um, that there be no advertisement, no, no paper advertisements in the windows of the first floor unit. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Yes. Or, or commercial unit. And the commercial, commercial. It's the commercial unit, yes. 
Is that, so, is that fair enough, Mr. Rubin? Yeah, we make sure the word commercial is in the room. Right, I think, I think they, I think, um, Mr. Florio and yourself, you understand what I'm saying. Like sometimes, especially if it's, let's say, a convenience store, all of a sudden they have a sale that week. Next thing you know, there's a paper up there. Then they don't take it down. Then there's another paper for the next week's sale, and so forth and so on. I think we're trying to redevelop this area to make it look nice. Let's do it. So, yeah, eliminate the the inside of the advertisements. That's what okay, I like. So, so, commissioners, if a motion is made to approve the application tonight, there would be a condition contained in, uh, included in the resolution that states, no, there would not be any paper advertisements in the windows of the first floor commercial unit. Okay. Hey, Madam Chair, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so I'm going to ask if anyone would like to make a motion on this application. This is Commissioner Dean, and I'll go for the motion. Okay, thank you. On the application of MAFHH LLC 175 Broadway, Patterson, New Jersey, 07505, the address of the property is 241. Rosa Parks Boulevard, Block 3507, Lot 45. I move that the Board of Tony prepare a resolution granting the site plan approval of variances subject to city engineer approval and HEB, HEB soil conservation district approval with the uh, condition of no paper advertisement on the commercial, uh, uh, commercial unit of the uh, building. Is that, is that Great. Is that okay, Ms. Mr. Aquaviva? That's fine, Madam Chair. Okay, great. Do I have a second? A second by Commissioner Lorenzo. Okay, roll call, please. I have to hear the motion. Oh, you have to. I didn't, I didn't hear the second motion. I didn't, I, okay. I didn't okay, Mr. Lorenzo, just say I second the motion. I second the motion. Thank, Thank you. Roll call, please. Yes, ma'am. Commissioners, Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Ligamso? Yes. Commissioner Santana? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Fulmore? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Figueroa? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Councilman Kilik, I apologize. Councilman Kilik? Yes. Thank you. A Vice Chairman Udine? Yes. Chairwoman Northrup? Yes. Thank you. This application has been granted. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Um, I believe we have some other business commissioners. Uh, the rest of you have a good evening. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'm talking now to Mr. Deutsch. Do we have resolutions tonight? Oh, we have resolutions. Oh, for God's sake, how many? 167. <laughs> <laughs> okay, would shock me. All right, so um, all right, so we'll uh, we'll uh, begin with resolutions. Uh, Mr. Applegate, will you be reading them? I, I will. Um, Michael, do you want me to go in any order, or just in the order that you sent them to me? Uh, can you start with forty-one Auburn? Okay, bear with me one second. I have just just got which, which one? Is, which one is forty-one? JCM invest, Investors X, X11. Is that an X11 or a Roman numeral 12? Okay, Roman numeral 12. <laughs> okay, um, on the application of JCM Investors, Roman numeral 12, X11, LLC, uh, for the property located at 41 Auburn Street, Block 3607, Lot 1, the property being located in the RA2 zone of the fourth ward redevelopment plan. The applicant was seeking site plan approval in bulk variances on a 2,500 square foot lot, proposing to remove the existing three-story building and to construct a new three-story residential building with a total of six units. The board considered this matter at its August 18th, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. Second. Second by Commissioner Dean. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Um, Aquaviva, yes. are the commissioners that voted the first and second, were they, uh, did they vote? Um, yes. 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 Yeah, Michael normally reads the vote on the resolution, so I'll, I'll defer to his notes on that. I did, I, yeah, okay, I did, um, 
double check with that. And the commissioners that can vote are Commissioner Santana. Okay. Oh, okay. Are we voting? Yes. Are we voting, Mr. Deutsch? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Santana. Councilman Kalik. Yes, sir. Commissioner Fulmore. Yes. Commissioner Figueroa. Yes. Commissioner Fisher. She's frozen up. Uh, Vice Chairman Udine. Yes. And Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Which one? 41 Diamond Avenue, Patterson Qualified Opportunity Zone, LLC. This voice say it again because it kind of cut off. Patterson Qualified Opportunity Zone, LLC, at 41 Godwin Avenue. Thank you. On the application of Patterson Qualified Opportunity Zone, LLC, for the property located at 127. 129-131 and 133-135 16th Avenue. Oh, no, 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 no. That, huh? What? Uh, Patterson Qualifier. There's another one at 41 Godwin Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let me get back into that. I was... Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't realize there were two. Mike, was that the one with the 24 units? No, five, five units. All right, hold on. All right, we're going to have to hold off on that one because I noticed a mistake on the resolution. So. I mean, unless you want me to just read it into the record and then revise the resolution and send it to you tomorrow. Yes, let's do that, please. Okay. Um, on the application of Patterson Qualified Opportunity Zone, LLC, for the property located at 41 Godwin Avenue, the property being located in the RE2 zone of the 5th Ward Redevelopment Plan, the applicant is seeking site plan approval on both variances to construct a five-unit residential building. The... Board consider this matter at a September 29, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Dean. Roll call. Commissioner Santana. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Commissioner Fulmore. Yes. Commissioner Figueroa. Yes. Commissioner Fisher. I don't see him anymore in the meeting. He says his Chromebook. Uh -uh. He has a little issue with his computer. I will deal with him. Thank you. Please continue. Vice Chairman Dean. Then yes, sir. And Chairwoman Northrup. Yes. Okay. Um. Patterson Fund, 1 LLC, 212, 214, 12th Avenue. On the application of Patterson Fund, 1 LLC, for the property located at 212-214, 12th Avenue, Block 3506, Lot 24, the property being located in the RA2 zone of the 4th Ward Redevelopment Plan, the applicant was seeking site plan approval and bulk variances on a vacant lot to construct a new three-story residential building with a total of nine units. The board can um, consider this matter at its August 18th, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Yeah. Second. Second. Second by, I see Commissioner Fulmore said second. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Santana. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Commissioner Fulmore. Yes. Commissioner Figueroa. Yes. 
Commissioner Fisher is no longer on. Uh, no, he's here. Fisher. He's here. Whatever he is, Fisher. He's back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry about that, Chromebook. You're still celebrating the Jets victory. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Chairman Udine. Yes. And Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. Okay, the next one is um, Shabir Raz Razik, uh, 86, Marion Street, uh, 513 Total Avenue. This was the Moss parking lot. Okay, on the application of Shabir Razak for the property located at 505-513 Total Avenue, Block 607, Lot 18, the property being located in the RA2 area of the first ward redevelopment plan. The applicant proposed to construct a 10 space parking lot for the existing house of existing adjacent house of worship. The board considered this matter at its September 1st, 2021 regular meeting. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second, Second by Commissioner Figueroa. Roll call, please. Um, Fisher Figueroa, you were not at that meeting. All right, thank you. Wait a minute. I remember this. I remember this. But, okay. Um, okay, who, who, who made a second here? Was that Commissioner Fisher? I think it was Fulmar, wasn't it? Second. Commissioner Fulmar, okay. Yeah. Was the second, okay. And roll call, please. Commissioner Fulmar, you were not at that meeting. <laughs> well, fancy meeting. <laughs> I remember this as well. <laughs> okay, we were all in La La Land. So, Commissioner O'Dean, you like? Oh, is it Commissioner Santana? I think we should let let Commissioner Santana. May I may I say something, please? You can have them vote, and when I um when I fix it and make sure that they're there, um, if it's okay, Aquaviva, we can actually just have them call in as a yes vote, and we move it at the end. But at least you'll have a complete vote. If there's no confirmation, or you can carry it. And well, Commissioner Santana... 100%. I have Commissioner Santana with a second. Okay. Okay, let's do the roll call. Commissioner Santana. Yes. Commissioner Roman. Yes. Commissioner Lorenzo. He was not there, I don't think. Yeah, he, I don't think he was there. Which one are, are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> now you now you confused. You gave the, Mr. Deutsch, if I may interject here. I know you haven't been around me lately, but I'm catching my notes. You say that 516 total laugh, but Mr. Aquaviva said 505 513. Okay. For Shabir Razak? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I have it as 505 513. I turned over the wrong resolution, so let's 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 have a first and second motion again on this. Yes, I made the first that meeting. Commission. I made the first. Okay. And can I please interject as your secretary? And, and Mr. Aguaviva, can you just repeat it? Because I have a Sure. It's, do you want me to read the resolution again? Read the, res the, resolution. the resolution, the applicant, and the address. Sure. Um, for the applicant, uh, for the application of Shabir Razak, the property being located at 505-513 Total Avenue, Block 607, Lot 18, the property being located in the RA2 area of the first work redevelopment plan, the applicant proposed to construct a 10 space parking lot for the existing adjacent house of worship. The board considered this matter at a September 1st, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? No, no, wait a second. I, I apologize. Commissioner Figueroa was at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. But so was Commissioner Fulmore. Yes. And so, yes. All right, so Commissioner, Commissioner Figueroa did second it first before, so we're going to go with I made the motion. Commissioner Figueroa is the second. Commissioner Figueroa, say I second it, please. I second it, please. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Santana. Yes. 
Councilman Kalik. Yes. Commissioner Fulmore. Yes. Commissioner Figueroa. Yes. Vice Chairman Udin. An absolute yes. And Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. Okay. Moving right along. Paramount Assets, 268 Carroll Street, 272 Carroll Street, and 355-367 Market Street. Okay, on the application of Paramount Assets, LLC, for the properties located at 268 Carroll Street, 272 Carroll Street, and 355-367 Market Street, Block 4321, two, I'm sorry, Block 4320, Lots 16, 18, 26, 27, and 28. The property being located in the C1 zone of the fifth ward redevelopment plan. Uh, the applicant was seeking site plan approval and both variances on a combined 44,012 square foot parcel to use an existing 10,371 square foot first floor building space that was formerly used as a food retail store as a proposed laundromat containing 90 washers and additional stack dryers. Uh, the board considered this matter at a September 29, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Commissioner O'Dean. Yes. Roll call, please. Commissioner Santana. Yes. Commissioner Roman. Yes. Commissioner Lorenzo. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Vice Chairman Udin. And yes. Chairperson, Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. All right. Last one. Unless you want to do more. No, that's fine. Let's just move right along. Patterson Qualified Opportunity Zone 127, 129, 131, and 133-135 16th Avenue. Oh, boy. Um, okay. Give me one second. Oh, I got Okay, I got it. All right, on the application of Patterson Qualified Opportunity Zone, LLC, for the property located at 127, 129-131, and 133-135 16th Avenue, Block 4211, Lots 40, 41, and 42. The property being located in the R82 zone of the, of the fifth ward redevelopment plan. Um, the applicant is seeking site plan approval and both variances on a lot with existing structures and parking to demolish the existing buildings and construct a new four-story residential building with a total of 24 units. The board considered this matter at its September 29, 2021 regular meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? So move. Do I have a second? Very good. Okay. Co who? Commissioner oh, Jean? No, Commissioner Lawrence. Lawrence. Okay, Commissioner Lorenzo. Okay, and uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Santana. Yes. Commissioner Roman. Is that a yes, Commissioner Roman? Commissioner Roman, are you there, sir? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Lorenzo. Commissioner Lorenzo, put your you're muted. No, exactly. Yeah. Give me a second. I don't see him. I do see him. You do? Is it a yes? Yes. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Kalik, sir. Yes. Vice Chairman Udine. Yes. And Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. Okay. Is that the end of our resolutions, the marathon resolutions? Okay, so um, so let me just say the next meeting is when, Mr. Deutsch? 
Two weeks from tonight, October 20th. We have two Topic. matters on, on the agenda. Okay, great. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for your time this evening. Have a good one, whatever is left of it. And we'll Before see you in a few we weeks. Leave, yes. I'd like, okay. to, I'd like to ask permission, Chairwoman Northrop, if I may address the board very quickly. Yes, go ahead. I wanted to say thank you for your prayers and just giving me that hope of confidence and returning has been the greatest day of my life. I'm so proud and honored to be your secretary once again. God bless you. We're so happy to have you back. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yes, for sure. Okay, thank you so much then. And again, everyone, have a good evening. What's left of it? Good night. Good night now. Love you, <laughs> yeah, woo -woo -woo. I love you too. <laughs> All right, enough of the love fest. Have a good night. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Al, I'll call you tomorrow now. He's the board journey of the divorce. He's the best. You're the best. Al hung up already. I said he was the best. He hung up.